Hey Teddy, today we're going to explore the inner workings of your mind. How do you feel about that? Sure thing. Well, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm not sure I want anyone poking around in my insides. But I suppose if it's for educational purposes, I'm willing to make a sacrifice. Plus, I'm always up for good adventure. Wow, I wasn't expecting that kind of response. What a great introduction to this topic. In my previous video, I introduced how Teddy Ruxpin works and provided an overview of all the project's major components. You may find it helpful to review that video first. OpenAI's GPT-3 is the first component I'm covering in depth because that is actually where this project began. I wanted to see what it was capable of and I was delighted by what I discovered. When starting your own project, you'll also want to do some upfront experimentation to dial in the kind of interactive experience you want to achieve. Let's briefly review what ChatGTP is. Instead of describing it myself, I'm going to let ChatGPT explain what it is in its own words. It tells us that it is a language model created by OpenAI. It is based off of their GPT-3 generation of models, which are quite good at generating human responses to natural language. In essence, it takes in text and adds onto it the text it predicts should follow. And it is good enough at it to sound convincingly human a lot of the time. When I asked ChatGPT what GPT-3 is, it tells us that it is one of the largest language models ever created and was trained off of an enormous amount of text data. GPT models were built using artificial neural networks, which are roughly modeled off of how neurons work in the brains of living things. Unlike traditional models, its behavior is not defined by a programmer writing code. Instead, it learns on its own how to behave through exposure to data. As impressive as ChatGPT is, it has limitations like any other technology. ChatGPT's biggest limitation is that it won't always provide a correct answer. This can happen because it was either exposed to inaccurate information or didn't encounter any information on a topic during its training. It will confidently tell you something that is incorrect, so don't consult your AI powered teddy about medical conditions, legal advice, or investment decisions. It also won't be able to answer questions about recent events. Its knowledge is limited to what was available at the time the model was trained. Now that we've reviewed what ChatGPT is, I'll introduce you to the OpenAI Playground to show you how it works from a developer's perspective. Accessing the Playgrounds will require you to create an account with them first. We can access the Playground using the link at the top of the page. From within the Playground, you'll see several GPT-based models are available to choose from. Since we want to access ChatGPT, I'll change the mode from Complete to Chat. The Playground visibly changes with that selection. Next, I'll check that I'm using the latest model available. I'll leave GPT 3.5 Turbo selected because it was the model powering ChatGPT at the time I recorded this. It's worthwhile to experiment with other models. OpenAI provides multiple options because each has its own advantages and disadvantages. You may find that one of the alternatives works better for your project. In the spirit of brevity, I'm not going to review the other options because in my experience, the defaults work really well. An understanding of ChatGPT's concept of roles is key to having it take on a personality. It defines three roles, system, user, and assistant. Of the three, system is the most important for shaping a personality. What is specified here sets the tone for how ChatGPT will respond to requests. The prompt I'm entering for the system role instructs ChatGPT to be Teddy Ruxpin and gives it some additional direction to fine tune the personality. The user role is a request that is given to ChatGPT to respond to. I'm going to ask it to introduce itself. After pressing the submit button, we'll see ChatGPT's response given under the assistant role. Much of its response was reworded from the system role's prompt. However, it came up with it being the world's first animated talking teddy bear on its own. That is because ChatGPT is well versed in pop culture and has information about the character. We'll see even more of this when I ask it to tell me a story about its friends. In the response, we get a complete story with a reference to Grubby, another character from the world of Teddy Ruxpin. What is really cool is that I can also engage with it on a personal level. When I ask it to tell me its favorite food, I get a response that's in character. This bear likes honey. What a surprise. Let's look at a basic example of how to work with ChatGPT with Python code. All of the code seen here is available from my GitHub repository. The link is in the description. I chose to implement the ChatGPT code in a separate file called OpenAI ChatGPT because it is a good practice to write modular code. 
This will make it easier to trial other AI language models that may become available in the future. In OpenAI ChatGPT, most of the interesting work is done in a function called Query AI. Its purpose is to take in a user query and pass it to ChatGPT for a response. To accomplish this, I'm calling the OpenAI Packages Chat Completion Create function. Looking at parameters of the API call, we see they closely align with the options from the ChatGPT playground. Just like in the playground, I'm setting the model to be GPT 3.5 Turbo. And under messages, there are also the familiar system and user roles, which are given variables to populate them with a desired personality prompt and user request text. The project also includes a sample script called TestAI for trying out the ChatGPT code. When I run it, it prompts for a user query. I'll ask it to introduce itself. And moments later, we have an in-character response from ChatGPT. In addition to the response, it also displays the response time. This is how long it took for ChatGPT to provide an answer. This is important because this is a contributor of how delayed Teddy will be in giving a response. The illusion of interactivity will be broken if the delay is too long. It seems like the delays have gotten longer recently. And this may be a result of ChatGPT's increased popularity. Fortunately, OpenAI does provide tools to help mitigate this concern, but there is enough to that topic to be its own video. Hey Teddy, now that we've shown everyone the inner workings of your mind, is there anything you want to say to our viewers before we finish? Sure thing. Hello viewers, I hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse into my thoughts and the way I function. Remember, despite being an AI, I love making new friends and having exciting conversations. So, don't hesitate to chat with me whenever you feel like it. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care and stay awesome.